This is a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus book cover keyboard. And this ugh, is a trash can. And I think that if you watch my channel, it's obvious that I'm a big Samsung fan. I mean, I've got the Galaxy Watch 3, I just got the Fold 2, but I really wanted something for some light productivity work that I could use around the house or a coffee shop or wherever and not always have to be tied down to my PC. And that's why I was super excited about the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which I think is finally a real iPad Pro competitor, giving consumers some choice. And I am going to be doing a full review, so make sure you subscribe to not miss that. But the thing is, you can't really be productive without a good keyboard. And there are so many things that are right with this keyboard, but just a bunch of little annoyances that add up to a huge headache. And you know what? This trash can, it just isn't big enough to represent the sheer size of my disappointment. Hold on. Yo guys, Jake Bacon here, and the book cover keyboard for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 and S7 Plus, it's a decent keyboard. And don't get me wrong, but there are things that you need to consider before purchasing this. And there are things you need to consider before clicking out of this video, like subscribing for more content like this, massaging that like button until it starts to sizzle, and ringing the bell for that sweet, sweet smell of bacon in your inbox. So I'm thinking of this as basically a PSA for you guys because I want you to be informed to make a good decision. And I am gonna be talking about things I like about this keyboard and I'm a big Samsung fan, but this review is going to overall be a little negative. So if you can't handle that and you know who you are, then click away now. But if you are okay with hearing other people's opinions and possibly saving you from spending money you shouldn't, then stick around. If you didn't get this keyboard on special with a pre-order of the Tab S7, then the Tab S7 model costs $199 and the Tab S7 Plus model costs $229. That's more than most people spend on any keyboard and it's even dangerously close to some high-end mechanical keyboards. So for that price, this needs to be good. And I know this isn't a laptop, but some of these things really hinder me from using this thing for any form of work or productivity. And really, what is the point of basically a $1,000 tablet, not including the keyboard, if you are just going to basically be using it to watch YouTube videos and browse the web? And as I was typing up this review, I'm getting one of the first annoyances. So let's just get into that. I am trying to be productive here, like I'm sure most of you considering this tablet will be. So I've got Word open on one side of the screen and then YouTube and my notes app, Google Keep on the other side of the screen, just to reference what I wanna talk about. Honestly, pretty cool. But as I'm typing in Word, I then wanna go over to Google Keep and scroll. Well, nope, if for some reason thinks I wanna highlight the words. And then when I click back into Word, depending on where you click, it will either think you wanna scroll or just wanna move the cursor around. It seems that if you click in between the words on either app, it will default to highlighting, and then you need to click outside or in a blank space in order to scroll. But it's frustrating and annoying because any other device from PCs to Macs, that's just not how it works. It will always just scroll, and then if you wanna move your cursor, you just click where you want, and then if you wanna highlight, you click and drag. But that's not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. This could be just a limitation of Android with how this is functioning, but it really just makes me wanna scroll with the touchscreen instead. But I'm someone when I'm in keyboard mode, I just wanna be using the keyboard for everything. And then when I'm in tablet mode, I'll use the touchscreen. I don't really like going back and forth. Also, if you let the device go to sleep and then come back to using it, sometimes the cursor will take upwards of like three seconds to start working again. It might not seem like a big deal, but over time, and when most other devices don't do this, it gets frustrating, but that's not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. Let's get into the trackpad. First, the good stuff. It's not the biggest trackpad in the world, but I think the size is fine. The click and tactility of it, it's good as well, but that's where it ends. For some reason, there is a lot of friction when moving your finger across the trackpad, especially if you put any pressure at all. You can probably actually hear it here.
And I've tried MacBook Pro keyboards, the iPad Magic Keyboard, Surface Pro keyboards, and none of them do this. Most of the time, this wouldn't be a huge deal, but where it really matters is when trying to click and drag if you wanna move or resize apps, or even just selecting text, especially if you're trying to do it with one finger. You can click with your pointer finger and then drag with your middle finger, but the friction still makes this an uncomfortable maneuver. It just doesn't feel like the premium trackpad experience that you would expect from the price tag. Yeah, you can use a mouse, but then you lose the gestures. And if you wanna use this on the couch or in bed or just somewhere where it's not practical to use a mouse, then that's just not really a viable option. But that's not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. When scrolling through web pages or really any app, it's hard to explain, but hopefully you'll be able to see it in the video. But it kind of hiccups sometimes or bounces and goes backwards a little bit. So it feels like you have to keep going over the same part twice every so often. It's just, not a smooth experience. And you can't customize really anything about this. You can't change how fast it scrolls. The only thing you really can customize is the mouse pointer speed. But that's still not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. There's no backlight on this keyboard. So unless you are in a decently lit area, it's really hard to see. So forget about using it at night with no lights or possibly even a dimly lit coffee shop. I was even using it recently in my room with window light coming in. And as soon as it hit 7 p.m. and got dark outside, I had to get up and turn on the light. Hey, I know that makes me sound lazy and maybe it's not the biggest deal to some of you, but at this price point, this really should have a backlight. Sometimes the light from the screen helps with this, but in most situations, it just won't help. Now, if you're used to typical laptop or desktop function like using the space bar to pause videos, this doesn't do that. And you can't use the enter key to send messages. It's nice when you just wanna go down a line, but then when you wanna send, you have to either click or tap on the send button. However, I did finally figure out that it works if you press tab plus enter. The Tab S7 Plus model does have a function row and you can use it to open the app drawer, change volume up and down, change the brightness, turn on and off dex mode and open settings, etc. But you have to press the FN key first to use any of those functions. I much, much rather have those just work and then use the function key to use the F1, F2, F3, because I hardly ever use those. But again, of course, you can't customize this. But that's still not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. So what about the lapability? Oh man, the lapability. There's not much to say here. It's just not good. If you ever use a Surface Pro device, you probably know what I'm talking about, but this keyboard is basically designed like the old Surface devices used to be. And Microsoft finally made it where the back of the keyboard will magnetize to the bottom of the front of the screen to give you more stability. But of course, this doesn't do that. So typing on a couch or in a bed, in a chair, really anywhere besides on a table or a flat surface is just really a pain. When you do do this though, the keyboard wobbles and moves the whole time or the tablet will move as well and you have to sit just right, otherwise the whole device will be at an awkward angle. And that also means there really is never any angle to this keyboard at all. So if you're someone who doesn't like typing on a perfectly flat keyboard, this might not be for you. And then once you have attached the keyboard, well, you're pretty much committed to either using it or not using it. Because if I remember correctly, on some Surface devices and other devices, if you fold the keyboard back, the device will recognize that you are no longer using the keyboard. And so if you tap into a field where you would like the on-screen keyboard to pop up, well, this device still thinks that you wanna use the physical keyboard, so nothing will happen. This becomes annoying when you wanna fold the keyboard under the kickstand for added stability when drawing, writing, or editing photos. I did figure out though that if you do fold the keyboard all the way back, then it will work as intended. But if you wanna use it in the other mode I just mentioned, then it won't work. The best option is just to actually remove the keyboard, but then where do you put it? Again, if you aren't using this on a desk or somewhere convenient, you probably won't really have anywhere to put the keyboard. But that's still not the most annoying thing about this keyboard. I found an issue yesterday where if you close the keyboard cover while the tablet is at an angle, the weight of the keyboard makes it so it falls down a little bit. The reason why this is important is because usually when you close the keyboard cover and how it is designed is it will immediately lock and turn off the screen. Well, when it doesn't close correctly, this functionality doesn't work. So it's basically just takes a little bit to turn off. The same as it would if you just left the device there without closing the keyboard at all. Another mild annoyance, but again, for this price, it should have been designed better. And then while I was using the keyboard for the past few days before getting this review out, I had another annoyance come up where if you remove the keyboard, there's a glitch where the on-screen keyboard still won't come up no matter what you do, unless you just completely power off the device and then restart it. It's happened a few times since then, so frustrating. 
Now, I do really like the typing experience on this keyboard. The keys have a decent amount of travel, and they don't feel very mushy or anything like you might expect from a keyboard this slim. That is definitely the most satisfying part of this keyboard. So, then what is the most annoying thing about this keyboard? The most annoying thing about this keyboard is that it should not be having these issues for the price that it costs especially because the better Surface Pro keyboards are almost half the price. And then there's the fact that I really like this tablet. It's a great machine, but without a good keyboard, it just limits its use so much, it makes me really wonder if it's worth it. Because again, this is an expensive tablet to not be able to use for productivity. Not to mention the fact that this really is the only keyboard option there is right now, and I don't know if there will be any other options. I'm gonna be spending more time with it, and I will be doing a full review of the Tab S7 Plus very soon, so hopefully these are issues I might be able to overcome, because I do really want to like this device. All right, so I hope you guys found this useful and it gave you some things to consider before making a big purchase like this. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe for more, and always remember, in bacon we trust. Peace. Go. Go. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's my way.